I feel like everyone should be working towards something. Everyone should have an achievement. And that just goes back to the motivation and living inspired. So I want to explain how you can change your wants, the things that you want to accomplish, into achievements. Welcome to Exploring Mind and Body with Drew Tadia. Drew is an expert in nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, and more. And he wants to help you live a healthier, longer, and more active life. Now here's your host, Drew Tadia. Welcome to another edition of Nationally Syndicated, Exploring Mind and Body. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in, for being a part of our True Form Life community. We're coming at you with a brand new show. We appreciate whether you're listening on terrestrial radio across the country or as a podcast around the world. We certainly wouldn't be here without you. So stick around. We got all that coming up. This is Exploring Mind and Body. Naturally improve your lifestyle one show at a time with your host, Drew Tadia. All right, so we got a exciting show. I'm excited to talk about today because I think that I am on to something. I think I can shine some light here on a slightly different angle to a boring subject for a lot of people. <laughs> so I want to tell you about turning wants into achievements. And achievements are so uplifting. I think it's really difficult to explain to people how important achievements are because they help us work towards the things that we want to so that's what i'm going to focus on today and i'm going to try to stay away from the word goals because no one wants to no one wants to hear about the word goals so i'm going to talk about achievements i'm going to replace that word (laughs) for achievements because i think that there's a lot of there's a lot of ways we can be successful and it really it's really based around motivation like well someone say a lot of people like well why would i why would i work to achieve something let's say or why would i try to set myself up a goal because there's the opportunity there's this there's the saying that says oh if you never set a goal then you never fail (laughs) which is kind of funny i suppose but you would you set yourself achievements because that's where the motivation comes from so the very root of motivation is setting yourself achievements to work towards so that's why it's important to understand that the re- the reason like it wakes you up when you like when you get up and you don't really want to do what you said you were going to do or you don't want to get your workout in let's say that achievement that you're working towards that's what wakes you up so <clears throat> that's why it's important to set these achievements for yourself the things that you want to work towards and I want I'm going to explain today the difference between wants like so many people are like oh well I want to do this or I want to lose weight I want to lose inches I got that comes up all the time so I want to explain how you can change your wants the things that you want to accomplish into achievements so there's a big difference between the two and there's a large gap and we'll we'll talk about that today so Dorothy she has has a goal to she's 50 days in a row on a treadmill is is crazy and I, and she said to herself like it doesn't matter how fast i'm going how long i'm going for just commit and and that's something that needs to be done that's something that needs to be done to find that internal motivation so we hear it all the time it's a it's a regular question it's a question that comes to us weekly at least weekly a couple times a week like well, how can i find motivation to do this How can I motivate my kids to do this? That one's that one's coming up a bit more often now because so many people are stuck at home and the the kids the kids are stuck at home. They don't really know what to do to get them active and such. So it's a bit more challenging to explain this to kids. But I'm hoping that once I explain this to you, that you'll be able to implement it yourself. And I'll give you my own example of what I'm doing. What I'm kind of going through and then hopefully you can take that and you know what's interesting like i'm i'm excited like i feel like i'm on to something i really do because you know everyone's heard of those smart goals s the acronym s m a r t i don't even know what they are m is measurable a is probably actionable uh, they, they don't work like that's what they taught us in personal training have your clients set up smart goals and like no one does them so <laughs> so the reason why people don't set achievements they don't set them is because they 
don't know how. They don't want to put in the work because it does take time and effort. It takes time and effort just to plan it. And then you have to put in the action. Sometimes I think about something and I'm like, mm, don't really want to do that. But then I'm like, just do it. Because if I don't do it now, it's going to be two weeks later. I'm going to be thinking about it forever. And then by the time I do it, it's been on my mind holding me back, which is procrastination. It's something we're going to talk about as well. So it's important to understand that there's reasons why we don't, we don't, we don't do things. So I have to go back to not understanding how I think people, those that don't want to put in the work, because that's one of the three main reasons why people don't set achievements. They don't want to put in the work is because they don't really know how. So those two are kind of together. So those are almost the same one. So let's explain how we can set this up for you. So you can set yourself up with achievement. And, and remember when, when I went back there, or remember going back, I talked about how most people talk about struggling with motivation. So I wasn't able to get out of bed. I wasn't able to get my workout in. Didn't really feel like meal planning or going to the grocery store, whichever it is. Of course, we're a nutrition and fitness company. So we're talking about lifestyle here and we're talking about living healthier. There's a number of different things we could talk about. We could talk about finances or saving money, for example. You could talk about spirituality. A lot of people want to pray more or meditate more or be more mindful. There's, I'm hoping that this program that I'm experimenting with now and trying to put together, well, and, and, and putting together is going to be interchangeable for whatever achievement you want to accomplish. I feel like everyone should be working towards something. Everyone should have an achievement. And that just goes back to the motivation and living inspired. And I feel like there's, there's, it's like night and day. You have, you could have the same person at different times in their life that have an achievement to work towards and don't. And they are so much more excited and so much more happy, motivated, inspired to live life. And then you have those other people that don't really have anything to work towards and they are, um, they just kind of going through the motions until they find something to work towards. Or you could find two completely different people and one person lives incredibly inspired and then other people live uninspired and, and living inspired, I think, is the essence of life. The, the biggest thing here is that when it comes to an achievement, you have to figure out why it is that you're going to achieve that goal. So we have to consider what the reason is bef be before we set that achievement. So I want to, th I can think about Julie Weiss, for example, she's in our running club. She came on my ex um, transformations through running podcast and it's all, that's an all running podcast. But so she ran for, she ran 50 marathons in 50 days or sorry, 50 marathons in 50 weeks to um, raise awareness and raise money for pancreatic cancer. And you may be able to link the two that her father passed away from pancreatic cancer. So understand that that is very emotional for her because she was very close to her father. So for her to have a reason and a purpose behind why she said, I'm going to run like 50, like a marathon a week. That's a lot. I think most people like, I think a high number is like maybe, I don't even know. I can't even guess eight for the year or 10 for the year. So 50, like one a week is a lot. It takes a lot, a toll on your body. It takes a toll on your mind, physically, mentally, emotionally. But the purpose behind her reason for that achievement was so strong that nothing was going to get in her way from doing that. So in, we need to relate whatever it is your achievement is to something. Now, that's extreme, of course. It doesn't have to be like, your reason or your reasoning or your why it doesn't have to be that extreme, but it should be, it should have some type of connection. So let me give you an another example. Um, Ch Chance is a good one. So Chance, he ran a hundred days, a uh, minimum of 5k and he was raising money or raising money and awareness for mental health. And I know one of his good friends, um, his good friend, this, the, had a child that had, um, I don't know how to say this politically correct. They had some very serious mental health, mental health issues. And of course, it's also apparent in today, there's a lot of people dealing with mental health issues. So I feel like it's so apparent these days that we're, we all know someone that's going through a really hard time mentally. And it's mostly because of the seclusion, of course. And we, like most of us are even, I've even heard from introverts as 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 i am that they still need some type of physical connection 
but because so many people are isolated and stuck and not able to live the regular life that the mental health is really suffering at a high level so um that was important to to chance to run a hundred days straight of at least five k's because of his reasoning and that those are just two running those are two running goals i can tell you but i'm going to tell you about mine here as well but it's important for you for you to understand that there has to be a reason that reason to set your achievement will take it to the next level so you can still get through your day-to-day -day activities you can still get through your workouts your meals whatever it is but if you connect that reasoning so let me take let me give dorothy uh let me go through dorothy dorothy's for an example so she did 365 days that's a long time so that's a long term that needs to be broken up or broken down into smaller segments if you will which is which is what she is doing or has done. So the first month was just to, those first 30 days, break it up into 30 days is just to get on the treadmill. Doesn't matter how long, what you're doing. And then this month, the next month, this is her second month, she's doing um, a minimum of 3K. So that's her, that's her goal of, or sorry, her achievement, her mini one of 3K. So there's a big achievement and then it's broken down. So you have one thing, you have one thing to focus on and one thing to look forward to. So for me, offering accountability, I decided to set a, set an achievement for myself to walk on my hands for 10 seconds. <laughs> so for me, that's, that's a big deal. I've been able to, I can hold a handstand. I can hold a handstand for like a couple seconds. And that was good enough for me when I first started. I was like, I want to, and this was, I've been doing handstand on and off for a few years now. And I was like, I always wanted to do a handstand. So I taught myself how to do a handstand and I can hold it for, you know, two or three seconds, three or four seconds. Not, and, you know, not really thinking much about it. I just thought, oh, that'd be cool. Pictures look cool when people are doing handstands. So then I set a, a new goal for my, a new achievement for myself. And I said, I want to be able to actually walk on my hands because I think it's cool. So my reasoning for me, what I can connect that with is I think it's really cool when people are actually walking on their hands. It, it physically challenges a person. It definitely challenges me. So, and I like, I like these types of things inspire me to do physically challenging things with my body because I feel like if one person can do it, I should be able to do it. And I want to challenge myself mentally and physically. So those are a couple of reasons right there. So one of them is because I've never really been able to do it. I think it, it interests me. Like, I think it's really cool personally and i set i set this structure up which i'm explaining to you today and i'm hoping that more people will be inspired to set achievements because the old way of setting goals doesn't work like that's all there is to it and i don't know i know very few people and i feel like i know i, I live in an, an inspired world i know very few people that actually set achievements for themselves and it's because we don't know how it's because it takes some work and time and effort to put into them. But it's really that that same structure that everyone's been following. So I'm like, maybe there's a different way to do this. And for me to experiment and help inspire other people, that also interests me. So someone else can't come in and say, oh, well, you should do this because of this. It, it doesn't work. There's no connection. There's not an emotional connection. There's no reason for you to actually get there and do it um, for for chance he had a really good friend that he wanted to help out and help raise awareness and help raise uh, donations and and money for example so that was very personal to him for me it doesn't really interest me to run it does i run because it because i like getting outside i like because i like it that like gets me in shape makes me feel good breathe fresh air like, I, but it doesn't really interest me so for me to set a running goal it doesn't make it doesn't add up it doesn't make sense because I'm going to lose interest. It's not personal to me. So when you guys are setting your achievements, they have to be very personal to you. No one can tell you what it is. Maybe people can help you print. Someone can help you brainstorm, but you're not going to be able to have someone be like, you should do that because it's not personal to you. So for me, it was walking on my hands for 30 days. And that's a big step. It really is. And if those of you that haven't done handstands or have never walked on your handstands, there's a lot of room for improvement. There's a lot of room for failure there. For me, when I hold a handstand for three seconds, it feels like it's 10 minutes. <laughs> so I wanted to, so I wanted to take that up to the next level and actually be able to walk. And then I said walk for 10 seconds, which is quite a duration, I feel. 
Now, one of the things that, that's important for me is I set a, a very specific timeline of 30 days. I said, let me see if I can accomplish this in 30 days. I don't know if I can. I've no, I mean, don't get me wrong. I have full belief. There's just a little bit of doubt and there's a little bit of fear. And if there isn't doubt and if there isn't fear in the achievement that you're trying to accomplish, then it's not big enough. You haven't, you haven't dreamed big enough. If you're like, because that's what helps inspire you and helps motivate you. If you say to yourself, oh, I could do it. Like one of my achievements is to make myself a cup of tea in the morning. Like, well, that's not going to, <coughs> excuse me, that's not going to inspire anyone because a seven year old could do that. You, you know, put, turn, put, put the kettle on, you pour it in the cup. You know what I'm saying? So it needs to be something that's, there's a bit of doubt and then there's a bit of fear. And that's the fear, like the essence is the fear that needs to get you moving on. And that needs to be there to be like, oh, if I don't get the work in, maybe I'm not going to accomplish my goal. So I took my achievement. So I took the 30 days and I broke them down into 10 day segments. So for, for 10 days, I broke that down and said, I, I'm going to be able to mindset or are powerful. I'm going to be able to hold a handstand for five seconds, which I don't, which I haven't been able to do. Not anytime soon. Maybe when I first started out with handstands and I was inspired, but not within the last year or so. Hold a handstand for 10 seconds without support of the wall, tree, whatever it is I'm doing. Someone holding my leg. We've done that before too with Dorothy. So, so I broke that down. After 10, 10 days, I'm going to be able to hold that for five seconds. Then after another 10 days, see what I'm doing here is giving myself something to look forward to. I'm looking forward to that 10 days. And then I set myself a small achievement. So it's like, oh my gosh, how am I ever going to be able to walk on my hands for 10 seconds? I can't even hold a handstand for 10 seconds. So I broke that down into 10 days. After 10 days, I should be able to do this. And then you change your mindset. I will be able to do this. So that's for five seconds. Then for after 10 days after that, this is all guessing and testing. I don't know. And one of the biggest issues is the time frame. So people try something like weight loss. They try to lose weight for a week. <laughs> they sign up with a personal trainer. They go to the gym. I had this happen myself personally as a personal trainer. People would show up for a week or two and they wouldn't lose weight after a week and they'd quit. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, it's been a week. It's been a week. So from the 10, so after the 10 days of handstand holding for five seconds, I said, well, if I can hold a handstand for five seconds, I should probably be able to walk for about five seconds. So after another 10 days, I have set another achievement that I can be able to walk for another five seconds, which would bring me halfway towards 10 seconds of the ultimate five or 10 minute, or sorry, 10 seconds that I'm working towards. When I used to sit, I used to sit in the gym across from someone. And I would say as a personal trainer, how I started out, a number of years ago, I would say, what do you want out of this? Like, why are you coming to me? What's the main? And in most people, like 9.9 .9 times out of 10, people would say, uh, I don't know. I want to get in better shape or they, 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 don't, they have no purpose, no reason, nothing to inspire them, no motivation. They just thought, uh, like I'm supposed to, like I was told to get healthy. I need to get healthy and that's it. So, and of course, like I said, that's why I'm saying that one of the big reasons main reasons people don't set achievements is because they don't know how or why or what they want to get out of it. So you have to decide what it is. But that large percentage of people that come to me and they, and they say, I want to lose weight. Well, that's not an action. Do you, you understand what I'm saying here? It's not an action like an, a handstand or running or cartwheels. Like these are all actions that we can work with. You like in, on top of that. So losing weight isn't an action; it's a byproduct of of an action. So your main achievement is something you need to work towards, which is an action. And I feel like this is like all these steps are so important. But I feel like this is so such a key aspect because if you have an action, you're doing something physically to work towards that weight loss, if you will. But and of course, it has to be interesting. It has to be exciting. Who's excited about losing weight? I've never heard anyone wake up and, and say, can't wait to lose weight today. <laughs> it I mean, it doesn't happen. So the very purpose for most people when they set achievements is 
to lose weight, which no one's excited about. No one wants to do that. That's what they want. That's the, that's a byproduct of their achievement. That's That could come as they live healthier, as they're more active, as they set smaller achievements to work towards their big achievement. Weight loss is a byproduct. But if that's your main reason, it's not exciting. It's not interesting. In fact, most people hate it. So setting yourself up for something to work towards that you don't like, <laughs> most people are going to fail because they don't like it. All these steps that I'm sharing with here in this show are going to help you understand where, where I'm getting at. But uh, finding a supportive community, finding a mentor or a coach, which is what we're talking, which, uh, which is one of the points I'm going to talk about here. Finding a reason why, finding your why, like why do you really want to do that? And then setting yourself up with a clear plan of how you're going to accomplish that and break that down. And the, see, the thing here is that I, I personally, I wrote three pages out of how I broke this down and how to be very specific. And I want to talk about rewards. So you want to set yourself up with rewards because then you have something to work towards. So that in a nutshell is how I would set this achievement, fill in the blanks of what can also improve this. And then tell people, you know what the thing is, is that so many people make it a secret. Like, oh, when be, when, I, when I was doing coaching, I, for a couple of years, I did online health co health coaching. And I tell people, I, I would tell people like, have you told anyone? Some people didn't even tell their spouse that I was working with them. I'm like, what, what's the big secret? Like, why is that a secret? So the problem is, is when you start to live healthier, like, oh, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to live healthier. I'm trying to take some action steps. And they wouldn't tell their family members. So they would go to their family members for Thanksgiving, Christmas, birthdays, and they skip out on the appetizers, like I suggest, or they skip out on dessert. And their family members are irate. They're hurt. They're um, sad that they wouldn't eat. Th they won't eat their food. Um, and then that causes con con conflict in their relationship. And that con conflict is what is that a difficult word for me to say? Conflict. Conflict. <laughs> Conflicting. And so there causes so much conflict conflict in their life with their family who they're close with they stop they're like oh it's too hard my spouse won't join me in this journey it's too hard to cook two meals my family makes a big deal but the thing is if you would have told them at the beginning like hey i'm working towards this i'm really trying hard i would love your support with this then in most cases they should support you and if they don't i mean like we should really decide how much we want those family members in our life i'm not saying cut out your family members yet <laughs> i'm just saying that if they're not going to be there to support you you should really consider finding more people in your life to spend that time with but i think i know for a fact it's such a big problem when people make this a, a secret but it helps with accountability so that's why i'm talking about it now for my own personal reasons we have a we have an awesome fitness family group we have we have almost 40 people in that group now which is a good number for us and we have people that are in in i post my handstand videos for them every day people are encouraging me even as I, as i encourage them i check in with them for accountability i share a lesson each day that i've learned from my handstand so i've found my tribe i found my supportive community and i've found uh I, i'm following a program it's a 30-day program on youtube and i reached out to the guy who made it and he answered me so i have a mentor so these are all the steps that i'm sharing with you with you guys to help you understand that there's a clear repeatable process to success with your achievement as long as you're willing to follow the steps i'd imagine there'd be a lot of people that would hear us talk like this and be like okay that sounds great and not take any action towards it so knowledge is one thing we have to learn and understand how to do it and then we have to take action steps towards it. It will be reward enough for me to be able to walk on my hands for 10 seconds. But taking that to the next level, my biggest um, reward will to be will to uh, be to stay overnight in a five star hotel in the mountains. And most of you may have an idea of where that might be. <laughs> so, of course, so that's it's very it's very clear where it is. It's very clear how much it's going to cost. It's very clear that we're going to save some money or put some money aside in the travel fund to be able to reward myself. So not only is the actual achievement, but for me to be able to do the action is going to be amazing. I'm, I can't wait to do that. But on top of that, I'm still like, I can't wait to sit back in that hotel and be like, 
I made this happen. Like I earned this. I worked towards it. As much as it's going to be a reward, there should be something above and beyond to keep that motivation level high. So Dorothy and I do that ourselves. Like when we talk about the things, our achievements, the things that we're working towards, business-wise, financially, emotionally, physically, whatever it is, we talk about like we already have it. And that's definitely important, that mindset of, of achievement. And unfortunately, so that's a good mental aspect here. So the thing is like, I, I for personally, I took some steps back and I was like, I, I was in a car accident a couple of years ago. And there's still some things that I, I feel like I've limited myself because I never, I mean, I'm doing it now, but I, you know, I went through some physio, I went through some things to help, but I don't feel like I'm a hundred percent. And I don't like, I'm not on board with the people that are like, I've heard this number of times. Oh, it's never going to be the same. Are you never going to be a hundred percent? Don't believe that at all. So I feel like it's, it's, it's on our own. It's in our own hands to heal ourselves. And I never really took those steps. So and again, which I'm doing now, I'm making some big strides also. So jumping was something that I've avoided because of the car accident, because of my back. Um, and handstands as well, because you jump up with two feet basically and you land and there's pressure on your back. But the thing is, is that for me, it was a mental limitation. And I see this all the time with people in working out. Like I would go and train someone and I would ask them to do an exercise that I knew for a fact that they were more than capable of physically doing. And they would say, oh, I can't do that before they even tried. And I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, oh, I, I just can't do it. And I said, have you tried it before? And they're like, no, 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 but I know, I know I just can't do it. And one of my favorite quotes, and I interviewed Dan Millman. He's a, one of our favorite authors, author of his most famous book, Peaceful Warrior, Way of the Peaceful Warrior. And he says, if you doubt just one person, doubt just one person and you face one opponent, you're already outnumbered. And that's so powerful to me is that we always put ourselves down. We're the first people to put ourselves down and doubt ourselves before we even try. So for me, it was really hard to work with people that were like, had that limiting mindset of, nope, I can't. So someone told them in the past they couldn't do it. They may have tried something similar and weren't be able, and, and, and couldn't do it, but they didn't even try to do what I asked them to do. And so again, if I, if I look at myself, I was like, I had doubt in my mind physically. Like, can I do this physically? Because back am i going to make it worse is there going to be more pain am i going to set myself back what if i fall and so i actually did fall a couple times pretty hard i, I fell in here i was doing one of the exercises the guy told me on the video in a door frame and i missed the top and i fell and usually when i fall you kind of fall on your side or your shoulder i fell flat on my back and i delayed there for a second i was like oh that really hurt and then i was like I had like a brief moment of like doubt, like, oh, is that really going to hurt my, really going to hurt myself? And I got up fine. And I was like, oh, so that was a clear message to me. Like you can do this. That is not a limiting factor. It's your mind that's holding you back. So we have to believe in ourselves and we have to understand that these are things that we can accomplish and not let our minds get in the way. So um, that was, def that's definitely something that I wanted to share with you because that mental aspect is super powerful. But I'm gonna wrap things up here anyway. So everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for being here. All right, that's gonna wrap things up for this edition of Exploring Mind and Body. Once again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of our True Form Life community. You can always find us on facebook.com slash trueformlife. We post stuff there a couple times a day on our story. We're always trying to bring you more content around living a healthy lifestyle, whether that be nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, and more. We also have free challenges that we do at least once a month. So if you follow us along there, you'll be able to join maybe a plank challenge or a squat challenge to bat a challenge whatever it may be we'd love to have you join us we're also on instagram.com slash drew tadia again we're posting up there a couple times a day along with our story all dedicated to keeping you fit and healthy and on track our main website is trueformlife.com if you want to check out some of our products some of our services or if you just want some great content from videos to blog posts and recipes and more we got all that at trueformlife.com. Once again, thank you so much for being here. That's it. That's all I got. I'm out of here. As always, I'm your host, Drew Tavia, in health and fitness for a better world. Thanks for listening. 
You've been listening to Exploring Mind and Body with True Form Life's Drew Tadia, fitness expert. To find out more about the show, Drew Tadia, or to listen to past shows, visit exploringmindandbody.com.